In today's world, people are more dependent on technology than ever before. From waking up to annoying smartphone alarms, to scrolling through their social media accounts and even controlling devices around them. Technology is everywhere. With so much technology coming in, the risk of cyber attacks has increased. It's really important to understand and implement cybersecurity measures to protect our valuable information and ensure that our data remains safe. Hi, I welcome you all to this session on Cybersecurity for Beginners by Edureka. This will have everything you need to know to get started with cybersecurity. But before we begin, let's look at our today's agenda. First, we have what is cybersecurity. Here, we will discuss the definition and the scope of cybersecurity. We will also discuss the basic concepts such as the CIA triad, authorization, authentication, and non repudiation. Then, we will move on to the origin of cybersecurity part. There, we will discuss the historical background and evolution of cybersecurity. We will also discuss the key milestones and events that shaped this field. Next, we will talk about the necessity of cybersecurity. Here, we will discuss the reasons why cybersecurity is essential. Also, we will talk about some examples of real world incidents and consequences of cyber attacks. Next, we will move on to what does cybersecurity involves. Here, we will talk about the core principles and objectives of cybersecurity. We will also talk about the different domains within cybersecurity like network security, application security, and so. Next, we will talk about different types of cybersecurity threats. Here, we will talk about the various types of cyber threats such as malware, phishing, ransomware, and so on. Next, we can talk about ethical hacking and penetration testing. Here, we will discuss the role of ethical hackers like the white hat hackers. And we'll also talk about the benefits of proactive testing and vulnerability assessments. Next, we will wind up this video by talking about strategies to enhance cybersecurity. Here, we will discuss the best practices for individuals and organizations to enhance their cybersecurity. But before we begin with our discussion, please consider subscribing to our YouTube channel and hit the bell icon to stay updated on the latest tech content from Edureka. Also, visit the Edureka website for various cybersecurity training and certification courses, the link to which is in the description box below. Now, let's start with our first topic. What is cybersecurity? Cybersecurity is a combination of two words, cyber and security. The word cyber refers to computers, networks, and programs. And security, as you all know, means protection. Now, this gives us the definition of cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is a practice of protecting computer systems, networks, electronic devices, and programs from cyber attacks that intend to access, alter, or destroy sensitive user information and disrupt business operations. Now, cybersecurity covers various domains, including network security, application security, information security, and operation security. Now, let's explore the key ideas that form the core of cybersecurity. These concepts help us keep our digital world safe and secure. At first, we have the CIA triad. The CIA triad means confidentiality, integrity, and availability. Let's talk about confidentiality first. It means making sure only the right people can see the information. For example, it's like having a password to protect our email. Next, we have integrity. It says making sure the information is correct and hasn't been changed. For example, this is like checking if a file has been edited without your permission. Next, we have availability. It says making sure the information is there when you need it. For example, this is like a website that is always working so that you can use it anytime. Next, we will be talking about authorization, authentication, and non repudiation. Let's start with authorization first. It says dividing what someone can do. For example, this is like being able to read a document but you cannot edit it. Next, we have authentication. It says proving who someone is. For example, this is like entering your username and password to log in into a website. Next, we have non repudiation. It says making sure someone cannot say that they didn't do something. For example, it's like sending an email with a special code that proves that you have sent it. So, you cannot deny it later. Now, let's move on to our next topic the origin of cybersecurity. The history of cybersecurity began in 1971 when Bob Thomas developed a virus called Creeper. 
Creeper was basically a non-malicious piece of code that moved between computers displaying the message, I am the Creeper, catch me if you can. Now, in response to this, Ray Tomlinson came up with the antivirus program known as Reaper. Reaper could locate Creeper and neutralize its copies from the infected system. Now, this marked an early attempt at successfully creating an antivirus software and was the first historical movement when people realized the need of cybersecurity. Let's move on to our next topic, necessity of cybersecurity. Now, that happened in 1971, but in today's digital age, the necessity of cybersecurity has increased as people are more reliant on technology for their day to day needs. Now, cybersecurity is essential because it protects our valuable data and computer systems from malicious attacks that happen daily. Without proper security measures, sensitive information such as personal details, financial data, and private communications can be exposed to hackers. Let's talk about some real world examples that show that how damaging cyber attacks can be. Let's start with the WannaCry ransomware attack first. This attack took advantage of a weakness in Windows known as Eternal Blue. This weakness had been leaked by a hacker group a month earlier. Microsoft had already released a security update to fix this problem, but many users had not installed it. This attack affected 230,000 computers in over 150 countries. Next, we have the 2014 Yahoo attack. Yahoo experienced one of the biggest data breaches ever when about 500 million accounts were hacked. Hackers got into Yahoo system and stole information such as names, emails, addresses, birth dates, phone numbers, and even security questions and answers. Next, we have the Adobe cyber attack. Over 38 million customer accounts were hacked, including encrypted passwords, credit card details, and email addresses. The hackers also stole the source code for some of the Adobe popular software, such as the Photoshop and the Acrobat software. Next, we have the PlayStation Network attack. Hackers broke into Sony's PlayStation Network and stole personal information from about 77 million user accounts. Although, credit card information was protected, but other sensitive information such as names, addresses, emails, and birth dates were not. Because of this, Sony had to shut down their PlayStation Network servers for about 23 days. Moving on to our next topic, what does cybersecurity involve? It involves the practices, technologies, and measures that are designed to protect digital systems, networks, and data from various threats and vulnerabilities. Security updates, continuous monitoring, and user awareness are effectively required to recognize potential threats like malware and phishing scams. Now, talking about the different domains within cybersecurity. At first, we have network security. It means protecting the devices and data in a computer network from unauthorized access, attacks, or damage. Next, we have application security. It involves making sure software programs are safe from hackers. Next, we have identity and access management. It is about controlling who can access what information in a system. Next, we have cloud security. It is about protecting data and systems that are stored and run over the cloud servers. Next, we have incident response. It involves identifying, managing, and recovering from cyber incidents to minimize damage and prevent future attacks. Next, we have threat intelligence. It involves gathering and analyzing information about potential cyber threats. Next, and last, we have forensics. It refers to investigating a cyber crime after it happened. Let's move on to our next topic. Cybersecurity Threats Now that we understand cybersecurity, let's examine the common forms of cybersecurity threats. But before that, let's discuss what a cyber threat is. A cyber threat involves malicious actions intended to steal, damage, or disrupt data, compromising data confidentiality, integrity, and availability. There are two common types of cyber threats, malware attacks and social engineering attacks. Talking about various malware attacks, the first malware we have is viruses. A malware that attaches itself to the host file and spreads when the infected file is executed. The next malware we are gonna talk about is worms. It is a malware that spreads by itself without needing to attach to other software. For example, it's like a worm that digs tunnel in your garden, damaging plants as it goes. The next malware we are gonna talk about is a trojan. A malware that pretends to be something useful or fun but is harmful once opened. For example, it's like a fake present under a Christmas tree. 
that looks exciting but has something scary inside. Next, we have a ransomware. A malware that locks your files and demands money to unlock them. For example, it's like a kidnapper holding something valuable and asking some ransom. Now, let's talk about some social engineering attacks. Social engineering tricks people into giving away their information. The first social engineering attack we are going to talk about is baiting. So, baiting involves tricking users with some false promises like free prize money or lottery that actually contains some hidden malware that leads to a security breach. For example, an attacker might offer a free download that actually installs some malware. Next, we have phishing. Phishing involves sending fake emails to steal personal information. For example, an attacker sends an email pretending to be from your bank asking for your account details. Next, we have wishing. A phishing that is done through voice calls. For example, a scammer calling you pretending to be from a tech support and asking for your password. The next attack we have is smishing. A phishing done through text messages. For example, an attacker sends some text messages with a link that leads to a fake website that steals your information. Now, there are many other ways that attacker can harm your computer or steal information. For example, we have denial of service attack. What it does is, it overloads your website and makes it unavailable. Next, we have a distributed denial of service attack. It uses multiple computers to launch a DOS attack. Next, we have man in the middle attack. It intercepts communication between two parties to steal or alter your information. Next, we have a SQL injection attack. It injects malicious code into a database query to access or change the data. Next, we have zero-day exploits. It says attacking a software vulnerability that is unknown to the software maker. For example, it's like finding an exploit or a secret door in a house before the owners knows it. Moving on to our next topic, ethical hacking and penetration testing. Ethical hacking and penetration testing are ways to find and fix security weakness in a computer system or a network before hackers can exploit them. First, we will talk about the role of an ethical hacker in cybersecurity. Let's start with what they do. Ethical hackers are security experts who are paid to hack into systems legally. Now, why do they do it? Their goal is to find security problems and fix weakness before an attacker can find them. Now, how do they help? By identifying and fixing these problems, ethical hackers help protect system and information from cyber attacks. Next, we will discuss the role of penetration testing in cybersecurity. The first role is testing security. Penetration testers try to break into a system just like real hackers would. Next, they find weaknesses. They look for ways to get past defenses like guessing passwords. Then, it comes to fixing problems. When they find a problem, they inform the development team to fix it so that the real hackers can't exploit them. Moving on to the last topic for this video, strategies to enhance cybersecurity. These are the strategies that normal users and organizations should use to enhance the security of their digital assets. Let's start with the normal users first. First we have is strong password management. Use strong passwords that include a mix of letters, numbers and symbols. Avoid using the same passwords across different accounts. Next we have use two-factor authentication and multi-factor authentication. Use methods like OTPs, authentication apps and fingerprint scanners in addition to the passwords so that you can add an extra layer of security. Next we have is safe internet practices. Be careful when clicking on links or downloading files from unknown softwares. Next we have is data backup. Make copies of important files so that you won't lose them if something happens with your device. Next we have is privacy settings and privacy permissions. Check and adjust the privacy settings on your social media and apps so that you can control who can see your information. Next we have is awareness and education. Learn about common tricks that scammers use so that you can avoid falling into their tricks. Now let's discuss the strategies organizations should use. At first we have strong password policy. Create rules for employees to make strong passwords and update them regularly. Implement multi-factor authentication. Make employees use more than one way to prove who they are when logging into the systems. Next, we have regular software and system updates. Keep everything up to date to fix problems that could let hackers in. Next, we have is having a secure network firewall and intrusion detection system. A strong firewall and IDS should be used to monitor the network traffic entering and leaving the company's network. Next we have is a backup and disaster recovery plan. Make a plan to copy data often and practice getting it back so the companies can keep working if something goes wrong. Next we have monitoring security logs. 
monitor the company's computer systems to see if anyone is trying to access them without permission. Now that we have covered all the topics in this video, it's clear how vital cybersecurity is in our interconnected world. The internet offers amazing opportunities but also brings some serious risk. Strong cybersecurity isn't just a good idea, it's essential. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you like the content and this content will help you in your future. Thanks for watching and see you in our next video. I hope you have enjoyed listening to this video. Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!